Hi, I'm interior designer Tracy Metro, and welcome to the Dunn Edwards Paints How to Paint video series. Well, over the years, I've discovered plenty of beauty in and uses for things that others have actually kicked to the curb. And there is no easier and less expensive way to breathe new life into one of those street finds than to do a simple makeover with paint. So today, with just a few basic tools, I'm going to show you step by step how to paint an old piece of furniture and turn it into a jazzy new looking piece that will definitely get noticed in your house. Plus, I'll even throw in a few tips and tricks to make the job even easier. Now, before getting started, you need to prepare the area that you'll be painting. First, you want to protect the floor. Well, we're painting outside, but you still want to protect the ground, so you want to put down a drop cloth. To protect yourself, you might need to wear a face mask and some gloves. If you'll be painting indoors, open any windows and doors to allow plenty of ventilation into your work area. Now, even though we're going to be using a low VOC paint, it's still a pretty good idea to have some airflow. Next, place your wood furniture on the drop cloth. Whether you're painting one color or attempting a fancier paint job like we are here, good prep is always a good idea. And frankly, it really is the key to painting anything, especially furniture. So the very first step is to remove any hardware. This piece actually doesn't have any hardware, but you want to remove the hardware so that it's paint free. And this will make it look much more professional. And number two, the entire piece will be adequately painted so that at some point, if you do decide to change out the hardware, you won't have a paint coverage issue. Now, since this piece actually doesn't have any hardware, we get to skip step number one and move on to step number two, which is thoroughly cleaning the piece with warm, soapy water. Next, patch any chipped, holed, or pitted areas with wood filler. And what you need to do is apply most of the wood filler to the damaged part of the wood and not so much on the undamaged part. Of course, there will be some overlap onto the undamaged area, but don't even worry about it. You'll be able to sand that down later. This is so easy. All you do is take a putty knife and scrape away any excess wood filler. Then you just allow it to dry. Now, if you're going to replace any of that hardware, what you need to do is fill in those wood holes and drill the new ones. So now it's time to sand the furniture. And the goal here is to remove any varnish or lacquer that's on the wood surface, making it easier for the primer to adhere. So you need to start with 100 grit sandpaper to remove any gloss. Then finish with a 120 to 220 grit sandpaper to make the surface really, really smooth. FYI, the higher the grit number on the sandpaper, in this case 220, the softer the finish, while the lower the grit number, in this case 100, the rougher the surface. Now, a little word to the wise. If you're refinishing a large piece of furniture, you might want to use a palm or a hand sander so that your hands don't get too tired sanding all day long. And remember, always sand with the grain, never across the grain, and worse, never in a circular motion, because ultimately what that'll do is it'll show scuffs when you finish the piece. Now, if your piece has scroll work or other detailed indentations, make sure to sand those areas by hand just enough to be flush with the rest of the piece. Now, this really could take some time, but do me a favor, don't rush it. Remember, good painting is all in the prep. Now, if your piece is a laminate, you want to use a really fine sandpaper and only move in one direction. What we're doing is we're creating a way for the paint to bond, and you need to start with a high adhesion primer. Last thing, after you're done sanding, always wipe down the piece with a damp rag to remove any of that excess dust and debris. Next, if you want your coat of paint to adhere evenly to the wood or to the laminate, and for the paint job to last a long time. And honestly, who doesn't want it to last a long time and to look good? Well, you need to use a really good quality primer before you paint. I'm using Dunn Edwards Ultra Grip Premium Multipurpose Primer. To apply an even coat of primer, all you need is a paintbrush and a mini roller. Gently brush along the corners, edges, and hard to reach areas, then use the mini roller to hit those wide open spaces like this. And be sure to use your paintbrush to feather out those rolled areas for a smooth, even finish. Once the primer has completely dried, you can finally begin the fun part, painting. Now, as we just did in the primer phase, first we're gonna use a brush to cut into the areas that the roller won't reach, like the corners right here and the edges. What we're trying to achieve is a beautiful, smooth, even finish. Again, you wanna remember to feather out these areas. Okay, now that we've cut in, it's time to go to the wide open areas, and this is where I'm gonna use my mini roller. Again, just like we did in the primer phase. 
Once I'm done rolling on the paint here, I'll use my paintbrush to feather the areas to achieve that beautiful, smooth, even finish. This is gonna look so beautiful when it's done, and what I've chosen is Dunn Edwards Boat Anchor for the body of the piece. It's really modern. Now on the doors, because I'm using metallic paint, I'm doing the detail part first, as I want the most control over any streaks that tend to pop up when you're using metallic paint. Next, I'm gonna move on to our door color, which again, is the boat anchor. Allow the coat of paint to dry and inspect the piece for any areas that you may have missed. Yeah, I missed some right there. The first coat of paint should be given at least four hours to dry before another coat of paint is applied. So ask yourself, do I need a second coat of paint? Well, in this case, you absolutely do. And I would venture to say, in most cases you do, because one coat of paint might be a good looking job, but two coats of paint could mean a professional looking job. Then you wanna give that second coat of paint a whole day to dry if you're doing one. Here's a Tracy's tip for you. For added protection from nicks and scratches, apply a clear acrylic polyurethane finish over your second coat of paint. Now, word to the wise. Make sure that you let the clear finish completely dry before moving the piece, because if you don't, you'll wind up with fingerprints all over it. Boy, doesn't this piece look stunning? Well, if you have any questions or you just need a little bit of additional help, please visit your neighborhood Dunn Edwards Paint store. And for all of us here at Dunn Edwards Paints, I'm Tracy Metro. Thanks for watching and happy painting.